there's a cryptocurrency botnet that's targeting Android. Hey John, I hear you have a story about uh, vulnerability in uh, Android debug bridge. I do. The kind of similar to uh, something that came out oh, late last year, I think November timeframe, with a, uh, a cryptocurrency attack against that targets the Android debug bridge. What it does is it scans the internet, finds listeners on that port five 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 or whatever they've chosen to look for for the Android debug port, and if they if they notice that there's a listener there, ADB doesn't really have, especially by default, you know, it's not turned on by default, and it certainly doesn't have any kind of password protections by default. And so what they'll do is they'll, they'll then they'll be able to get into the system through that ADB port that's listening on the Internet, and they'll change the working directory from, you know, the standard working directory to slash to, to basically slash temp. If you think about it from the old, you know, Unix days or your, your operating system perspective, Slash temp is a world-readable, world-writable directory. And so now they've gotten the working directory where everything writes to is all in this open open directory. Then it will load this miner onto this device to start stealing your information. And and it will take, you know, and your and your money, your currency. So it seems like, you know, this week we had two stories about cryptocurrency. Um, either targeting cryptocurrency exchanges or the cryptocurrency itself. So those are important aspects for us to understand about, you know, what is the motivation of the attackers. Uh, clearly, they're interested in cryptocurrency. It's just kind of a, a fascinating thing is how it turns this open port into a particular version of the miner, hides itself because it executes that payload, and then deletes all the traces of itself. But e even in the interim, it's looking for other systems. And so the kind of this particular variant, which gets really in, you know, curious on how it works, is it turns to an SSH attack. So now not only has it gone to the, to the ADB port, it's now turned itself into this SSH uh, scanner. And so though I see in your system, in your Android phone, again, it's not something very normal. You have all these SSH hosts that you're trying to connect to. Let me go see if I can infect those as well. I think... You know, we'll probably see the continuation of this type of thing. I, I, I do, I don't know. I, like I said, you're shooting yourself in the foot by running ADB on open open ports, you know, to the Internet. But it is, you know, something you don't have to do. <laughs> you're, you're doing it to yourself, and you shouldn't. People will open up their devices. They'll buy a device, and then they'll open it up. And they become immediately immediately become targets because they opened it up. People on the internet are going to be looking for them, and if they find them, they're going to try to do stuff to them. That sounds like exactly what this was about. So Android is um, designed with security in mind. I remember reading a, a lot about that. Um, and they use uh, like basically the Linux operating system to set the permissions. I, you made earlier a reference to like um, the file system. I think every app that runs on Android is running as its own user ID, so it can only read its own files unless you root the device, which what means is if you're root, you can read any uh, file generated by any application, or unless you do what this thing did, uh, which is set, yeah, use temp, exactly. And, uh, but the Android debug bridge here, that thing, it, it's like the ultimate root on the system. You can upload, write APK files, you can uh, execute anything, and you can read anything. It's really, um, well, it's really powerful, and it makes sense for debugging, just not uh, in your, <laughs> not on your device. <laughs> I, I just, it, just, it just still kind of gets me, you know, you think, like I said, there, there's so many people, and, and it seems to be somewhat regionalized even, that root their devices by default, and 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 people recognize that, and that's why they, they you know these malware authors are, are realize that, and they decide, hey, I'm going to go ahead and you know take advantage of this, and, and you know, and a lot of these groups, you know, these same I don't, know, I don't want to say uh, populations also are the ones that are maybe the most interested in cryptocurrency. So you got this double whammy that you know you're you're off, you're, you're not only the most likely to have a weak or a weakened system, more vulnerable, but you're also the one that you probably take advantage of the most. Yes. 
So John, one point I would make is, um, you know, when I think of mining software, I'm usually thinking, like you said, of just using someone else's resources to try to add to a blockchain to earn a cryptocurrency coin. Uh, but I think you use mining in a way that makes a lot of sense to me as I think about this particular situation in that if there's a million people out there who have opened up their devices and have this bridge running through something they did to it, um, and those people are also uh, enthusiasts and likely to have a wallet of maybe multiple types of cryptocurrency, um, you can just mine those people in this case, and you can, um, with privileges, get access to their wallet, and I guess you can transfer funds from them to wherever you want to send it to, right? Is that the idea? You have the keys to the kingdom. You know, like the ADB is pretty open. You know, it's, it's, it's wide open access. You can find the things that have set UID, you know, the processes or replace those. But again, again, I think people just need to remember, you know, don't, don't, don't make yourself vulnerable, right? <laughs> You're vulnerable enough already without making it easy. <laughs>